Hey guys, it's a new video. Um, before I yank this clutch out, I just kind of wanted to show you guys the reason why I'm doing it. Um, you've probably all experienced a bad throw out bearing if you've driven manuals your whole life. Um, and I have this wall right here that'll kind of make the sound echo. So you should be able to hear it a little bit more defined. Okay, that's pushed in, out, in. Anyways, it's weird. It actually doesn't seem crazy loud today, but I swear sometimes it's really, really loud. Um, but anyway, I guess if I get in there and everything looks perfect, I could just change the throwout bearing, but I mean, if you're that far in there already, wouldn't it make sense to go ahead and change everything else? So I guess we'll play it by ear, but most likely it'll all get changed. All right, guys, I got her in here. Backed her onto the ramps and then jacked the front up. This is as high as my little jack stands will go. So it's a good amount of room underneath there though. Um, I was kind of looking at this, trying to think what I'm gonna do first. I know the starter has to come off. So I might do that first before I even get under it. Um, pulled some tools out of the Jeep for once um, so hopefully I got everything all right I guess I will tackle that starter okay so I'm looking at this it looks like I've got one bolt at the top and then if I can get down there another one that's still the top that I'm looking at I don't and then let me back it up. Yeah, that's the top. And then there's another one at the bottom with a ground wire on it. And I was looking at that. <laughs> that's actually the thickest ground cable going to this thing. And the only other grounds on this whole car are the one I ran to right here and the one I ran to the windshield wiper motor. So. I guess, unless this has been altered from the factory, they don't even have one going from the battery to the chassis, which is weird. They only have one going from the battery to the starter, and then surely there's one going from the motor to the chassis, I would hope. But maybe that's why these things have such bad grounding issues. Anyway, I'm gonna, I guess I gotta disconnect the positive, and this little other one slides off if it's not already falling off. So I just got to do that wire and then the bottom bolt with the ground wire and then the top bolt and it should come out. So I'm looking at this starter and you remember how I said that tab didn't want to stay on here and that's why I'm having trouble starting it if you can see there's like a little uh, drop of solder on there and it looks like this is soldered and this is also soldered but it looks like oops, sorry it looks like when they soldered this part a little drop got on there so when I try to put my little female spade connector on there it doesn't go in all the way so while I have this out, I'll probably take a soldering iron and just get that off of there. That way I don't have that issue anymore when I put it back together. But yeah, I think this is the original because I saw, let me back it back out, sorry. I saw on here somewhere, yeah, right there, it's got the Mitsubishi symbol and I'm assuming that's what they came with from the factory. But teeth look pretty good. Um, everything looks all right. Alrighty, 
got this drive shaft that goes from the transfer case to the transmission. It's just a real short little guy. So I'm going to clean off a little spot here and put a mark on it because I believe they're like balanced or weighted or whatever when you... Oh cool, I got a Sharpie on me. So I'm just going to put one mark on one spot. And this is the one that I can get to right now. I can't really get to the other end of it, doesn't seem like. But, uh, anyway, I'll, uh, if I can find my wrench. Let's see here. I'm gonna need to get another. These are 12 millimeter bolts. Oh, and I was also gonna tell you guys, uh, I need to grab another one, but I was gonna tell you on that starter, the top bolt was a 12 mil and the bottom one was a 13 mil. So let me grab another wrench and then I will time lapse this. Alright guys, that's out and uh, this looks pretty clean on this end. The seal didn't decided to come out with it so that's good all right so I got those four bolts right here I'm just gonna set all this back there and uh, keep going I had a heck of a time I kept fooling around with the um, transfer case gear shifter and I was like why is it not in neutral I didn't have the regular transmission in neutral I had like put it in reverse and pulled up the e-brake so it wouldn't fall off these ramps so yeah anyway so that was why I had to get up and down like three times anyway that's out so what else do we have looks like the sway bar needs to come off and I'm sure hoping let me back this up a little I'm sure hoping that uh I can get this out without having to do anything with the exhaust. I don't think I'll need to, but surely this guy is going to have to come out because this, that does not, you know, it goes all the way over, it's welded on. Right. I don't think, I don't think anything with the transfer case uh, shifter is going to have to come out. I had a nickel. Oh, I put a tough on tape on that last time, I guess. Okay, I'm just gonna leave that there. And it, on one of the older videos, this thing used to have like, that's neutral, but it used to have more slop than that in gear. And now it has that much. So I might try to make it even less. I can show you guys how I did that. Okay, I believe it was this bolt right here. I was just ratcheting combo wrenches to get that out in there. Okay, I think that's all the farther it needs to come out. But anyway, 
that little notch right there, hopefully you guys can see it. This notch gets worn out. And in my case, my bolt was completely broken. I'll, I'll wipe this off and re-grease it when I go to do it. But yeah, that little notch right there, um, if you guys can't see, there's a little, I just ended up finding a bolt. It's in one of my older videos. Um, it should be in the thumbnail picture, uh, fixing sock gear shifter or something like that. But anyway, I literally spent zero dollars on that because I just found a, a screw that I already had and I took the end of my drill and kind of shaped it, put it in there and that took care of the, the huge wobble that I had. I was so excited. Okay, so now this is... Whoop, Turn that back on. This is the front drive shaft, and right up in here we have a uh, 14 mil uh, for this uh, cross brace or whatever you're gonna call that. It almost looks like a sway bar, but it's not. Oop. All right, guys, looking straight up. Uh, that's the oil drain plug. That's the filter up there. Um, there's two nuts, one on this side and one on this side, and I believe, yeah, that's already hand, I kind of broke them loose, um, I believe those studs are part of the transmission and they kind of slide through the, uh, block and then the nut goes on the other side, so let me see if I'm going to be so lucky on this one, I broke it loose too, oh yeah, it's hand loose also. So I'm sure the other ones are going to be a lot harder to get to, but I didn't want to go ahead and loosen that because if I do that, it's going to put a lot of strain on all these other ones. So I may end up propping it up with something, like get a stick or something like that before I pull these out. Okay, so here we are topside, and you can see that's one of the nuts I just pulled off and going upward. Um, wow, I have a hard time believing there's only four bolts. You can see those two, the one right there in the middle of the screen and the one over there in the middle of the screen. And other than those two, I've never seen a transmission that only had four um, bolts holding it in, but maybe that's all there is. So, all right, I'm going to get set up and try to pull those out. I think... We'll be okay to pull those completely out because those studs still stick all the way through. So until that slides back, it can't really fall. So I should be good to go ahead and pull that one and that one out. All right, I'm not sure if you guys can see that. If not, I apologize. I got this thing up in there as best I could and I removed the rotor. Oh yeah, that's not even that tight. Whoa, those are long ones. Wow. Oh, really? Oh, maybe I should quit while I'm behind. All right, this is how long that was. And here's the other two in my little magnetic deal. Guess I need to go that way. Okay. Uh, and of course it came off. Maybe because these things are so small, there is only just four bolts holding the bell housing on. Oh, come on, baby. Yeah, there might be, that one doesn't want to come out as easy, so there may be, it may be starting to like put tension on it. Because that technically is the last bolt. I just figured those studs would be kind of holding it up, and then the tail end is held up by that bracket back there. It's kind of coming by hand. Yeah, okay. It doesn't feel like it's falling out, so that's good. 
Long bolts. Okay, I didn't drop that one. So, there she is. Put that over there. I'll go ahead and put the distributor cap back on before I forget. I've been known to do that a couple times. And then fight because it doesn't want to run. Okay, the front of the transmission is that way the bell housing um, the tail section is right here and there's these four bolts and I'm assuming that if I pull these four out nothing's gonna happen because it should still be supporting the weight of that until I do something back here I don't think anything's gonna happen so I'm gonna try to go ahead uh, get a longer extension I'm gonna try to pull these four out real quick and uh, See what happens. Right. Oh. Okay. So I guess this is still kind of holding it. It's just not as square without the four bolts in it if that makes sense. Okay. So what's gonna happen now? Oh, jeez. So are we being held up by this piece of wood? What happens if I remove that? Okay, so it's kind of still holding on to the motor. I can hear the motor mounts when I jiggle it like that, so. All right, well, we'll probably just leave that I should probably pull it out. I'm just gonna leave it twisted in there, but it might be in the way. Okay. I can't believe somebody must have replaced these. I can't believe these are still good. The rubber on this. And I was looking at a lot of the mounts are good. I mean, every one that I've looked at so far. Which is just crazy. Some of the body mounts are just totally like need to be replaced. Okay, well, guys, I think all the bolts are out. Um, so the thing that is really gonna suck is if I can't fit it in between the header, well, the exhaust, and this front drive shaft. But we know with those studs that stick through, it's gonna have to go back toward you guys a good inch and a half before anything happens, before it'll drop down. The other thing is I can't see on top of this, so there might be like um, plugs or wiring or, I guess I need to take a better look at that from the top, don't I? Okay, you see in my fingers right there, those two wires, when I tug on them, that is these two plugs right here. So now if I wiggle them, uh, you can see them down there. So I need to unplug these guys and kind of free them up. Okay, so it was this one and this one. So I believe we pry out and pull. Okay, there's that one. Come on, baby. And then that one. Hopefully they'll fit behind this again. <laughs> Probably not. Oh, that's stupid. Are you serious? They don't fit behind there? How dumb. These are so fat and ridiculous. I just can't even believe it. Okay, I think I need to undo that stupid 10 millimeter bolt just to get these two plugs to pass through there. I'll wake the neighbors up. Okay. <clears throat> Which ones were they used to? Okay. Alright. Let me get in a position where I'm not going to lose my teeth.
Yeah, that doesn't work. There's no way there could still be a bolt in there. Because it wouldn't have come out that far. It's so close. Bar. This is getting scary. This might work. Oh yeah. Whoa. Okay. I think we're very close. It's gonna fall down and smack me. Oh shoot. <laughs> that ain't good. that off. It's ripping. It's a 10 millimeter. Can I just use this while I'm holding this up? Junk. It's just like a little cover that goes over the flywheel. And I thought it would come off with it, which I guess it would have if it wouldn't have like bent. Alright, I'll just deal with that later. Okay. How the hell is this thing going to come out? <laughs> yeah, not even close. Okay. I guess maybe I do need to take this drive shaft off. There's like a little spacer. Wait. Here. Probably don't need that, but if I'm gonna take this front drive shaft out, I need to take the tension off of it. So I probably need to get this back up in there. Taking this front drive shaft out. Okay, wish me luck. Okay. Whoa. Probably should have my safety glasses on. So that was the trick. Just had to take off the exhaust to free that up so it could rotate. And I had to drop the front drive shaft also last night. So let me try to drag it out of, out of there. It's kind of heavy. Um, as small as it is, it's awkward. Let me uh, get it out from under there and we can look at it. Well, she's out. Um, <laughs> this looks like a damn gear shifter for a dirt bike. Anyways, the uh, throwout bearing still looks perfect. I don't, I don't understand why it was making so much noise. Because it doesn't seem like there's anything wrong with it. 
maybe that's just how it is. So hopefully all this wasn't for nothing, because uh, it's a lot of work. Anyways, I think I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. All right, guys, man, it's muggy out tonight. Um, so I've been screwing around with cleaning this transmission and it's pretty clean. I was thinking about painting it because there's a lot of areas where there's no paint. Um, and then I was thinking like if I would need to use any kind of special paint or whatever, I doubt this thing actually gets that hot, but it's gray and I do have <laughs> I know this would be way, way overkill, but I do have this um, grayish colored paint that I used on the header, and that's like at least three quarters of a can. That would probably be enough to do it. Like I said, I'm not worried about it ever getting that hot, but that would be a pretty good color to use on it. Anyways, I'll decide, I guess, whether or not I'm going to paint it, but I think what I want to do, see these two plugs right here? I'm not 100% sure what they are, but I would imagine that one of them would be for... Come on, stay on there. I would imagine one of them would be for the reverse light. So, hopefully it's this one. I don't know, that's kind of... Looks like that got yanked out and somebody tried to solder it back on there, but... Um, I was going to maybe stab the gear shifter back in there and then see if I can get continuity on one of these two plugs when I put it in reverse and see if I can get that working again might have to dig into there to let's see yeah I don't know I would like that to work though so I think I'm gonna spend a few minutes and see if I can figure anything out on that but got it pretty clean I still haven't even uh pulled the actual clutch out yet, but I'll get to that here soon. Alright guys, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I, I put this back in, I, I made a new screw that takes up even more of the play on that, but what I'm actually trying to do is figure these out. So this one, I believe, I've got jumpers going from this plug to my meter, and I'll show you. Basically I have my meter set to where if the leads touch, if there's continuity, I get a beep. And what's kind of weird, but kind of makes sense, is let's see, I got first, second, third, fourth, and fifth gear, I get continuity. But reverse, I do not. And I think I remember reading something. Um, one of these plugs is actually for like a fifth gear output. I don't know what that tells the vehicle. And it tells it it's in overdrive for whatever reason, so I'm not sure if that's even needed anymore. But I can rule out this plug being the reverse light plug. And so that means that this one here, where the wire is ripped out of, is probably my reverse deal. So I'm going to have to take a razor or something to kind of dig in there figure that out. Um, I can probably get rid of this zip tie. And 
This is like epoxy or something. So I'm gonna have to dig in there and see if I can find that other uh, connection point. All right, guys, to kind of show you what I'm doing, trying to fix this reverse light circuit. You see the copper on either side there? It's probably hard to see, but at the end of my finger there, there's some copper, and there. So I was trying to touch those with these leads because I have my meter set for continuity, and when you have it, that's ohms, which will also show you continuity, but when you have all these little sound wave looking thing there, if you short them together, you get a nice little beep, and that you know, and that, that tells you your resistance. Zero is a dead short. So, what I was trying to do was put each of these leads on that copper there, and then there's a button on the bottom of this. So that button, uh, when the thing is in reverse, you see that you see that deal right there? That's what pushes on this button. Like if I pop it out of reverse. That goes away. So, anyway, I have not been able to get the thing to beep. So, I don't know if I should keep digging or just... It almost seems like this switch is not working. But I might screw with it for a little bit longer here. All right, guys, I've been kind of whittling away at this with the drill bit and stuff. You can see uh, I exposed the spring in the middle that holds that button um, down, holds tension on that button. You can see the copper on either side. So I got a soldering iron heating up. I'm going to try to take the, uh, here's the original plug. I'm just going to try to solder these wires back to the copper, and then hopefully I can either melt if that's epoxy, I won't be able to, but if that's plastic in there, I might be able to melt it on top of that spring to put tension back on that spring. All right, guys, I got the plug soldered on there. And you can see the button sticking up the bottom. Problem is the spring is still free floating. Um, I have my leads clamped to the other end, so you can we can hear it if we get a beep when I push the button in. That's what we're looking for. It's kind of erratic still. So. Better than what we had. Okay, I'm gonna keep working on it. Man, I am not getting anything done tonight. This is ridiculous. I should have either already had that painted or had the clutch out and reassembled. Uh, this, or I still gotta do the damn undercoating and all that stuff. Uh, I should have never fixated on this. Who needs reverse lights anyway? Jeez. Alright guys, after a lot of work and re-soldering that, hot glue, oh, perfect. Anyway, so that's the one for fifth gear, and then we've got this guy for reverse. Cinch down like that, but I'm not going to do that because I may paint this. I don't know. We'll see. Man, I'm such a sucker for the way aluminum looks. And I know this thing's been probably rebuilt. I'm seeing all kinds of orange RTV and all the seams. I think everything on this thing has been like redone because the like when I bore scoped it, the pistons looked good. There was no carbon on them. Um, everything I've checked, like the fluids and everything, all point to this thing's recently been rebuilt, but I don't think the guy that I bought it from knew that. Um, the only thing that he really told me 
is that it sat for a while and he had he wasn't super mechanically inclined and he had to have somebody come out because it wouldn't start and they put a new fuel pump in it and like replaced one of the lines and that was really all he knew about it so um anyways somebody did a lot to this thing i wish i could keep it because this is got really good bones but yeah i was gonna say i i would love to spend the time to like make this aluminum look really good but you can like the sky's the limit with how shiny you want to get on aluminum you can spend days trying to make it look good but i think i am going to spray this with something probably this stuff um just because i have a lot of it it doesn't need to withstand 2000 degrees fahrenheit this probably doesn't get above 150 but um I'm just gonna rough it up. This is 220. Just gonna kind of rough it up and go over it. It doesn't need to be a great paint job. Nobody's really ever gonna see it, but aluminum can corrode. So, I mean, I doubt it will here in the desert, but uh, I'll probably shoot it with that stuff and call it good. Well, guys, I wasn't able to do much on this thing today, but at least I got it pretty down to aluminum. Um, there's a few spots where in the nooks and crannies, but I think that'll be fine as like a primer underneath. Um, should be good to paint. I, I love the way they look, just aluminum, but I think I am going to go ahead and shoot it with some of that. Uh, where'd it go? the way overkill flame proof crap because that's roughly the same color and uh i think it, that'll work good so all right i'm gonna at least try to get a coat on there Alrighty, well, finally getting back around to the clutch. I guess this will just hang there. Um, it's a 13 millimeter, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that guy off. I think I need to quit spending money on stuff that uh, I need to hurry up and sell this thing because I keep spending money on crap I don't need. Look at this clutch. Looks pretty good. And this looks pretty good. And this looks pretty good. The only thing I did notice was there's a little bit of a groove. You know, where that mates up which I'm not really sure maybe that's normal because obviously it's gonna go from stationary to spinning every you know a bunch of times but I haven't done a lot of clutches is that normal to have a groove there even though this bearing feels perfect and spins fine I guess we'll find out when I stab the new one in and take it for a rip hey guys once again I tried to make this one video but it just it's gonna be two for sure um, just between the extra stuff like troubleshooting the switches and just little things you know like I just been trying to fix stuff up as I go and with the undercoating and um, just all that stuff it's just I couldn't do it in one video but I'm almost done with it um, so there will be another video out very soon so hopefully you guys can watch that one too, and uh, I appreciate you watching this one. I hope you're having a good weekend, and we'll see you very soon. Take care.